Today I'm going to be going over three methods to move your Proxmox server from its current hardware to new hardware while keeping all of its VMs. Each of these methods has their own pros and cons, and then once going over that, I'm going to show a demonstration for each of these methods. And if you want to skip to the parts, use the chapters below. The first method I'm going to be going over is transferring all the drives. This involves taking all the physical drives from the previous system, transferring them over to the new system, and then configuring the new system to boot from the correct drive, and then once booted into Proxmox, making any configuration changes as needed, for example, to the networking. The advantages of this method is it's very quick, because all you have to do is just move the drives from one system to another. There is no data copying required. This also works if the previous system is unable to boot due to a hardware malfunction. This also keeps all your configuration, scripts, and other things when you transfer it to the new system. The disadvantages of this system is the new system has to have all the available drive base from the previous one. So this wouldn't work very well if you're moving from like a 24 bay server to a 12 bay server because there's no space to put those additional 12 drives. Another disadvantage is there's possible issues when moving between hardware. Generally Linux and Proxmox deals with this pretty well, but there can be issues, especially if the hardware is significantly different. The next method I'm going to be going over is creating backups using vzdump of all of your previous VMs and then copying those backup files over to the new system and restoring those backups. This method is likely the simplest and most supported by Proxmox and least likely to cause issues. I'm going to also show some methods using NFS and an external hard drive of how to actually physically move the data from one system to another. The last method I'm going to look at is using clusters and Proxmox to migrate to new hardware. The existing server will create a cluster. The new server will join the cluster. All the VMs will be migrated from the existing system to the new system. And this can be done with the VMs running with almost no downtime as then the existing server will be removed from the cluster so only the new server remains. This can get a bit complicated and is likely the most complicated method due to clusters. Now it's time to demonstrate moving the drives from the old server to the new server. I've already transferred the drives from the old server to the new server and now I have the IPMI pulled up on my screen so I can access the screen of the new server here. This would normally be plugged into a monitor but luckily this server has IPMI so I can look at it remotely. So I'm going to just power on this server and we're going to take a look at what happens. Likely it's going to just boot just fine because that's the only bootable device in the system. But just in case, I'm going to enter the BIOS and make sure that the drive that's the boot drive is set to the boot drive in the BIOS. And here are the boot settings on my board. The boot option number one, I've set to the SATA device on the system. And under the hard drive properties, I've set my Toshiba drive, which is the one I want to boot from to the highest priority. You may also run into issues with the UEFI versus legacy boot on some systems. If you're transferring from an older system like I am, that's legacy boot, most newer systems will boot from that. But some of the newer systems I've seen won't boot from legacy boot and only boot from EFI. And in that case, you probably will need to do a reinstall and use one of the other methods. So Proxmox has successfully booted on my new server, and it looks like Proxmox is ready to go. But when I try to load this web page in another system, it says it can't connect. And likely that means it doesn't recognize the new network adapters and they aren't connected to the virtual switch because they have new names. So I need to connect those new network adapters to the existing virtual switch and then I can access it using that IP address. So I'm just going to log into the system here. And if I run IP ADDR, which lists my network devices and that, I can see this bridge has this IP address, but all of these links are down and likely they're different than the existing names. So one thing I can do is I can cat etc slash um, network slash interfaces and this will show me my configuration. And looking at the interfaces file, I see ones like ENP4S0, 9S0, but these aren't the same now because these new network interfaces will have new names. So I'm gonna have to edit this to make it all correct again. Now I need to figure out which one of these network adapters I need to attach to my bridge. And all of them are currently down, but I know one of them is up because I have a cable plugged into it. So I'm going to use IP space link space set space up, and then I'm going to just go through all of them and see what happens. If I do 6s0, let's run this again and see, oh, says down still. So I'm going to run 7s0, and let's see what it does now. This command seems to be taking a bit of time, likely because IPMI is running on the same port. Now that I know the ENP7S0 is the network device I want to connect to the virtual bridge, I'm going to edit the file that manages all the network adapters and that virtual bridge. 
So I can do a few changes. I am going to get rid of all of these lines except the one that I need. Because these are enabling the other network cards, but I don't need to enable them because I don't have anything plugged into them. And now I'm going to change that ENP3S0 to the ENP7S0 of my new device. And just add that 7 here. And then it looks like I had a bridge using all of the ports recently. I'm only going to be using one of the ports now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change that 3 to a 7. And then I'm going to control X to exit, save it. System control restart networking will restart all the networking things. And now it should be able to load the page. And it looks like it loads the page. And I'm into the web interface for Proxmox. I think everything's working correctly. And taking a look around, it seems to be. I can see all of my existing VMs. If I look at like some of my data drives, those are all my disks. Local has some of these ISO images. And let's just boot up a VM to make sure it's working correctly. My VM has now booted successfully, and taking a look at the summary page, I have access to all the additional resources on this new server, and have a lot more RAM available. It's all ready to go, all my VMs work, and it's a fully functional on the new server now. Now I'm going to take a look at using backups to migrate from the old system to the new system. So on my screen now, I'm actually showing one of my VMs and one of the VZ dump backups that I've created for it. And creating a backup is fairly easy. You just click backup now, you select where you want your backup to go, and you click create. And then if you want to restore that backup, you can click restore, and you can restore it from there. But the problem is, that's restoring it on the same system. If you want to restore it on the other system, you have to get this file from this system to another system. And I'm going to be showing two ways of doing that. One is using an NFS share, which copies it over the network, and the other way will be using an external hard drive. Let's start with using the external hard drive first. In order to use this external hard drive, I'm going to have to format it and add it to the Proxmox system. This can be done in both the command line and the GUI, but I'm going to be showing it in the GUI this time. So under the host and then get disks, I'm going to click on the disk that I just added, which is this one terabyte hard drive. It's an external hard drive, but the Proxmox, it's just another hard drive. I'm going to click on wipe disk, which is going to delete all the existing partitions and data from the drive. And then in a second or two, it's going to become an available disk that I can partition of the file system. In order to do that, I'm going to go click on directory here, and then I'm going to say create directory. I'm going to select my unused SDD disk, select the file system, in this case ext4, but for most cases it won't matter between ext4 and xfs, and then I'm going to call it like external backup. In the left hand panel I can see my new storage I created using the external hard drive, and on the types of storage you can store, backups is one of the type. So now I can go to one of my VMs, create a new backup of this VM, and then I'm going to use the external backup as a storage type, leave everything out, it says default, and click backup. I've now connected my external hard drive to the destination system. And if I take a look at the destination system under disks, I can see the drive here. But I need to mount it and make it accessible. So I'm going to first go into the shell and make a directory for it to go in. So I'm going to just do make dir slash mmt slash ext. And then if I run lsblk, I can see the same list of drives the GUI provides to me here. And slash dev slash sde1 is the drive I want to mount. So I'm going to do mount slash dev slash sde1 slash mnt slash ext. And if there's no feedback, that means it's mounted. And then I can go under data center and then storage and add that to the Proxmox system. So I'm going to go add directory and I'm just going to call it ext and then slash mnt slash ext. And then under content, I'm going to select vz dump files because that's what I have stored on this drive. So I'm going to select add, and in a second or two, it'll pop up on the left, and if I click on this under backups, I see all the backups of those VMs I created previously. The next method I'm going to be taking a look at of moving the VZ dump backups from the old system to the new system is an NFS share. So this is like a network storage share that the old system will mount, store its backups on, and then the new system will mount and restore the backups from it. So in order to do this, the first thing I have to do is create that NFS share. The first thing I'm going to do is install the NFS server package, which is required to actually run the NFS server. It does not come by default in Proxmox. So I've done apt install NFS server, and in a second or two, it should be done installing. Now I need to create a directory that I want to share. It looks like slash mmt slash pve slash old spin is an existing drive that I've added to this new server that I want to store my data on. So I'm going to cd to that drive. Looking at that drive, it sees it has all this Proxmox data, but I'm going to actually create a new folder, um, and I'm just going to call it NFS, and that's the one I'm going to be sharing over the network. 
And then I'm going to actually have to set up the share. So I'm going to use a text editor, in this case nano, then slash etc slash exports. Exports is the config file that controls the NFS server. And then at the end of this exports file, I'm going to add a new line which configures the share. So the first thing I'm going to put in is the path of the folder that I want to share. So it's slash mmt slash pve slash old spin slash nfs in this case. And then I'm going to type a star here, which means every system on the network can access this. This is not the best for security, but this is fired walled in from the rest of the internet and only going to be used for temporary backup restoration processes. And then under this, I'm going to put read write for that, and then async, which increases performance. And then I'm going to do control x exit, and then I'm going to do system control restart nfs dash server. And if nothing comes back after this, your server has probably been successfully created and ready to be mounted on the old system. And then on my old system again, I'm going to go under data center, storage, add, NFS. And then under this little prompt, I'm going to give it a name that I want to call it. So like NFS backup. I'm going to put the IP address of the new server, which I just set up to share on. And then under export, it should show me that path that I just configured. And then under content, I'm going to make sure that VZ dump backup files are selected. And I actually got a permissions error the first time I ran this. So I'm going to go back to the system and run change mod, which changes to permission on a file, dash R, which is recursive, not needed in this case though, 777, which means all the permissions to the folder, and then this NFS share folder. And then once I do that, now I can mount it because that gives it so everyone can read and write access to this NFS share. And then I'm going to run backups for all the VMs and just make sure it's pointed to this NFS backup. And then when I say backup, it's going to be copying the data over the network to the new server. And now I can see all the VMs that are stored on the backups here. And if I want to restore those VMs, I can click restore. And then I'm going to have to select storage to restore them onto because it doesn't have that same storage device on here. So in this case, it's old spin is what I want to store it on. And everything else I can leave on default and it'll keep the same settings as they were set up on the previous system. So I'm going to select restore. And in a second or two, it's going to finish restoring it. And this VM right here is going to have all the same settings and data as it did on the previous system. I'm now going to demonstrate how clusters and Proxmox can be used to migrate from one piece of hardware to another. So on the screen in front of me, I have the management pages for the new system and the current system. On the current system, I have some VMs and my new system is just a blank install of Proxmox. And the first thing I have to do is create a cluster. In order to create a cluster, I'm going to go to data center cluster, create cluster, give it a name, and then click create cluster. And in a second or two, the cluster will be created, and now this will be in a single node cluster of just itself. In order to add the destination system, click join information, copy that information, go to the destination system, data center, cluster, join cluster, paste it in, and then put the root password of the system it's joining it. And in a few seconds, it should join the cluster and both systems will be together in a cluster. You may have to reload the page to see the data now, but when I log into the system, it says it's now part of a cluster. I can see both nodes right here. And if I look under cluster, there's both systems. Before I can migrate my VMs, I have to set up storage on the destination system. When my destination system joins the cluster, all of its local storage is wiped, so it has to be set up again once it's in the cluster. Clusters work best with shared storage, but since I am going to be working with local storage, I'm going to configure it for each node. So I'm going to set up a new piece of local storage on the destination node. I'm just going to call it like store. I'm going to put the path that the storage is in. I'm going to give it all the different data types that I could possibly want to store on it. And I'm going to make sure under nodes, it's set to only the destination. Because the source drive does not have a drive mounted at this spot that I want it to be able to access. So I'm going to click add and now I can see the storage just available to the destination system. And that's where my VMs that I migrate will go to. In Proxmox, migrations can either be done offline or online. And when migrating between systems using local storage, online migration gives you the option to pick where the storage goes on the destination system. Offline migration makes it go to the same name storage on the destination system. So for example, I have this VM right here that has source ZFS. And this is only on the sending system. The destination system does not have any source ZFS data. So if I try to do an offline migration right now, it's going to throw an error because it can't access that storage on the destination. But one way to solve this is to move it to storage that has the same name and is accessible on both systems. In this example, both systems have local storage on their boot drives that they can store VMs. So if I run migrate now, I can migrate it from local storage on my sending node to local storage on my receiving node. 
if I do a live migration, I get this option for target storage and I can select something different. So I can select my send pool that's only available on my destination and then it'll copy it to the send pool on the destination. If you want to migrate while your VM is running or migrate to a different storage on the destination system, use live migration. Otherwise, offline migration is typically faster. Now that I've finished migrating all the VMs to the new system, I'm going to remove the old system from the cluster so only the new one remains. Proxmox doesn't make this super easy and there's a lot of not very recommended steps in this process, so make sure you test this on some spare systems or run it when you have extra backups and time so if something does go wrong, you are prepared. But the command for most things in the cluster in Proxmox is pvecm. So if I run pvecm nodes, it lists all the nodes in the cluster. And then I can run del node and the name of the node, and it will remove that node from the cluster. But now the cluster expects two volts, but there's only one system to vote. So it's going to get into kind of a weird state like that and show an error. So I'm going to run pvecm expected one. And now it's going to say I only expect one vote. So if I run this command again, it'll actually fully remove it. Sometimes I get this issue where it says it can't acquire the lock file. And what I need to do to do that is I need to go to cd slash etc slash pve. And then I'm going to go to the prive file. And then in here, there's going to be a lock directory. And once I'm in lock, I can remove the directory of file coral sync file. And then I'm going to run that remove node again. And it should say it's removed. So if I run pvcm nodes again, it should say I only have one node in the cluster. And if I reload the page, it's gone. I have a single node cluster and only this node remains. Now I run a configuration like this on my personal system where it's a single node cluster. And if I want to migrate again, a new system gets added to the cluster and this old one gets removed. But if you want to turn the system back into a standalone system, Proxmox has a guide of running all these commands here. They don't recommend you run this. Make sure you're prepared if there's any issues. But running these commands has worked many times for me in the past. So I'm going to go copy and paste all of these commands here. And what it's going to do is it's going to delete all the data of the cluster and then start this up with the local mode so it's just running on the single system. And now I ran all of these commands right here. And if I go back to my management page, reload it, it says standalone mode, no cluster defined, and all of my VMs and storage configuration is the same. And one other cool thing is if I open this Windows 10 VM, this VM has been running the whole time. And it never shut down or slept during this whole process. It had about 100 milliseconds of downtime during the live migration, but that's it. So if this method is done correctly, you can have almost no downtime for the VMs while moving from one older piece of hardware to a newer piece of hardware. I hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions below or any video suggestions of other things you'd like me to take a look at in the comments below.